Hello everyone. Now I have come back with another few lectures on learning controller action return types. Remember last time I have promised that you know we were talking about I action result type and uh, we hadn't discussed the synchronous and asynchronous action work with the I action result type. Now we are going to go for the both the type of action I am going to discuss in detail and how it works on the Visual Studio Preview 2019 that also I am going to demonstrate. Okay, so please hang on and um, watch the video from start till end. Okay, so what is a synchronous action? Now consider the following synchronous action where there are two possible return types. So you will see that there are two possible return types. One is return not found and another is return OK product. So it is all working on a product repository. Now what happens is that you know HTTP this is a get uh, verb. It's um, getting with an ID and it produces response type and which is the type of product. Product is the product model. Okay and status codes dot status 200 OK. So if the product is returned it returns okay with the product actually the um, payload of the product with the status 200 and if on try get product means you know this is try get uh, product method it returns a boolean and if it is false that means there is the product could not be found so it will return not found and it will um, store if the product is found it is supposed to return the output and assign it to a variable product okay which part is not shown and next is the explanation of what that code was in the preceding action a 404 status code is returned when the product represented by id doesn't exist in the underlying data store which i have already talked and the not found helper method is invoked as a shortcut to return new not found result and if the product does exist, a product object representing the payload is returned with a 200 status code, which I have already explained a few seconds back. And the OK helper method is invoked as the shorthand form of return new OK object result. All right. So let's see the asynchronous action. Now consider the following asynchronous action when there are two possible return types again. But here it's a subtle difference. You can see here if you inspect the code um, quickly that it's a post request and um, it takes an attribute produces response type. Again it is operating on product model or um, yeah, product class and status codes dot status 201 created. So that is through this alternate path return created at action name of get by id and new id equals product dot id whichever product is passed you get the id property from the product passed to the argument. Now here if um, nothing is found if product dot description dot contains xyz visit that is the condition so i am sorry the condition is something else that you know if someone writes it looks for a xyz widget then it will return a bad request that means 400 status 400 okay it will return and it will add the if if there is um, the product description doesn't contain this it will call on the add product async and it will asynchronously add to the repository the product payload. All right. So we will all see this in action. Now this await is in asynchronous uh, asynchronous uh, key, uh, this uh, works with the async method and await. Await means you know if you are not sure about asynchronous programming um, I would refer in the description to an asynchronous programming tutorial on my channel and you can have a look and uh, brace yourself with asynchronous programming. So 
asynchronous means you know once this method is called um, at this point in time at this code line um, till the product is added it awaits but it returns the control to the line of code that is calling this create async method so and when the result is found from this action method uh, from this line of code then it starts the control after this line okay so having said all that uh, a 400 status code is returned by the asp.net core runtime when the product returns product description contains xyz widget that's the explanation i have already made without looking at this slide and again a 201 status code is generated by created at action method when a product is created in this code path the product object is returned for example in the following model now let's come to the product model and it has got a few properties with int as id id as int and these are two required attributes the string name and the name and description are required fields okay so a 201 uh, this uh, product model in this model it indicates that the requests must, must include the name and description properties therefore failure to provide name and description in the request causes the model validation to fail and that's all today so before leaving let's recall what we have learned today we have learned uh, seen the web api controller action return types and how the asynchronous how the synchronous action and the asynchronous action work in code for i action result type to return i action result and this part this i will shift to the next lecture because it will be too long otherwise so if you like my videos please subscribe to the channel put your comments and share it with your friends thank you